Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Um, tonight, we want to do something special. I'm a huge believer on not only seeing the potential in people, but I'm a firm believer of giving people an opportunity to use the gift that God has placed in them. I'm also a big believer that in this church, I love it when we can hear from other voices, when we can hear from other wells of life and not just hear from the, you know, the same old people because I know that I'm sure that sometimes I can bore you. So we bring in other voices, other people, other guest speakers. Why? Because I want you to understand that, uh, that God speaks in a variety of ways, and, and I love that God speaks through different personalities as well. Not everybody connects with this personality. Let me tell you that. I know that. But that's okay because not everybody connects with your personality either, right? And so it's beautiful when you can be a church that knows how to gather a group of people and, and then we can all share something, the, uh, obviously from the same vein because it's all Jesus, but you get to hear it in a very, you know, fresh uh, and new perspective. And so tonight, I have uh, some some amazing people that are going to share. Each one will share for seven minutes. And uh, they're going to share their life experience or things they learned in the last, I think it's the last year, if I remember correctly, right? What did they learn in the last year that has blessed them now in uh, 2019? How many are ready for 2020? Yeah, are you excited about 2020? I mean, yeah, okay, let's be present, right? Let's be present. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's let's enjoy 2019. Um, but but let's get excited for 2020 because God is doing unusual things in your life right now. Whether whether you believe it or not, the only reason you're probably on delay is because you still won't accept it. So let's kill the delay and let's just say, God, here I am. Just use me. Be in Isaiah. Isaiah 6:11. You know it. Isaiah heard the message, the meeting that God was having with the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And God said, whom shall we send and, and who will go for us? And Isaiah, he butt in and walked into the meeting room and said, here I am. Send me. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for some goofy people that will just say, here I am. Send me. Can we just try that together? Ready? One, two, three. Here I am. Send me. Those of you that didn't raise your hand, stay behind. That's cool. More for us. So the first person I have tonight is Sharon. Sharon has been with us here, I think, probably now for about five, six years. Uh, is that about right, Sharon? Six years. And uh, Sharon is the leader of our uh, every other Thursday. She has a Bible study here at Elevate Church. And she it's open to men and women. And let me tell you something. This woman used to run from, from this 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 calling, this, this amazing gift that God has given her to communicate. And I love her communication skills because she just brings a whole other depth and a whole other level of, of, of conversation when she talks about Jesus. She's uh, too legit to quit. I love the fact that she, uh, though she's already, you know, someone of age, that she doesn't let that become her limitation. And, uh, and she's always ready to, to bring a word in season. So uh, without further ado, help me welcome Sharon McKelvey. Let's give it up for Sharon. You go, girl. You. Love you. Don't say that. Don't say that. I told him I'm getting comfortable up here, so he better watch out. Hi. How was everybody tonight? It's so good to come together with a family. And I'd just like to share a little few things with you that the Lord has laid on my heart. And we're kind of sharing our life adventures here. And I just wanted to tell you, like, after 37 years of being married and being a couple, I found myself without my plus one. And I had to learn to fly solo. You know, that's not necessarily easy at this time in my life. But you know what? God is faithful. I've got to put my cheaters on. <laughs> and um, uh, it was a whole new experience for me, actually. And I, wa I wasn't sure even how to fly solo. And I remember the first social uh, gathering that I went to outside of family. And it was mainly couples. It seemed like that no one really wanted to talk to me. Uh, I'm sure that that wasn't the case, but 
in my mind it felt like that and I really remember sitting there feeling alone and a bit scared and when I was sitting at the table all by myself somehow people just disappeared from around me and I just wanted to stand up and yell and say don't you care my husband died and of course they they didn't even know me so so how could they even care because they didn't know me but that's just me and my emotions and after I after that experience I realized that life is going to keep on going and I needed to learn how to live it I had to think about my finances my financial situation uh, John and I were not only partners in marriage but in business but when he became ill I really couldn't keep it going alone so now what do I do how can I afford to keep the house maintain the pool taking care of the pool was John's responsibility but I always watched him and I um, helped him where I could in the later years I got <clears throat> a little bit stronger than he did and um, he was good about explaining things when I asked him about the pool and, and stuff and even when I questioned him why he did something the way he did because you know I knew I had a better way to do it <laughs> later when I started cleaning the pool and maintaining it I found myself apologizing to John as I realized the why of how to, he did it. I also thanked him for teaching me. I found that I was capable of a lot, like using power tools. <laughs> Ladies, they're fun. <laughs> I realized that I was discovering my own identity. It was scary not having the income that I needed. And I have a dear friend who had a grandmother that needed a caregiver. The family were taking care of her, but they realized that they really couldn't do it uh, by themselves. So I was blessed and given the privilege of taking care of this precious 98-year-old lady for almost two years. I got to see her turn 100. And awesome stories this lady told. She came over from uh, Sweden on a freighter with four kids, at the oldest, the age of seven, I think. And it was just amazing to sit and listen to her and just get knowledge from her. They don't make them like that anymore. Um, as a result of doing this, I realized that I had a gift to share in caregiving. And you know, uh, I'm sorry to say, but I think our elderly have been devalued in this society today. I, I'm here to just show them the love of God. And I did some traveling. I went to back to my home state of Oklahoma and reconnected with family. I have a nephew and his wife. They adopted three special needs children and are giving them a loving and Christian home. I have a great niece and her pastor husband. They adopted two children in addition to their three own teens. My granddaughter in Texas, her and her husband have adopted two children. And these are just some of the amazing family that I'm blessed to have in my life in addition to my California family here. Um, God is moving me in directions I had only dared to dream of. And as Pastor said, I'm blessed to lead the Living by the Spirit Bible study the first and third Thursday of them every month. 10 o'clock, elevate across the street, get your Bible and coffee and come and join us. We have fun. We dig into the Word and, and really get excited about God. And, and it's, it's been such a growth experience for me. I am studying and learning more than I ever have. Thank you, Pastor, for pushing me in that direction. Uh, could you put up my scripture now? Okay, it's, uh, I've actually got two. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, 6 from the Living, New Living Translation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. This journey hasn't necessarily been the one I would have chosen. 
but I know that I can do it because I am not alone. I have my team church support, and God says he is with me always. My life is so full, and there is no fear of the future. Oh, and by the way, the family that I done the caregiving for the little 90-year-old or 100-year-old lady, two of the siblings sent me a bonus. <laughs> so God knows what we need even when we don't, and he is so good and so faithful, and I trust him with everything that I have, my life, and all that I've got, <laughs> and I'm glad that he's prepared me for what I'm doing now. And i just like for you now to give it up for Stephen, our next speaker. Awesome. What's going on, guys? How are you today, tonight? All right. So before we get into this, I just want to—I kind of want to pray us in before we get into the message. Um, so just bow your head and close your eyes. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for this opportunity to be here freely in your house, God. And thank you so much for eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today we're going to be talking about value. But more specifically, it's going to be about the value that God sees in us and the value that we should see in ourselves. Now, my first definition is the word value, and it's the care that someone or something deserves. So essentially, it's, you know, the attention that we want to put into something that we think deserves it. So for instance, I value my house. I try my best and do everything I possibly can to build it, to serve in it, to clean it, because I feel like God deserves it. I feel like you deserve it. Um, another one. I value my wife right there, the beautiful woman up front. Um, I value my wife. Uh, I do everything I possibly can to make sure she's happy, loved, and taken care of, because she 100% deserves it. Um, and in that same way, God values us, and you can see that in actually Romans chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, and it says... The law was without power because it was made weak by our sinful selves. But God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son to earth with the same human life that everyone else uses for sin. God sent him to be an offering to pay for sin. So God used a human life to destroy sin. He did this so that we could be right just as the law said we must be. Now, we don't live by following our sinful selves. We live by following the spirit. See, God valued our sanctity and our oneness with him so much that he sent his only son Jesus to be sacrificed he values he values us and he wants us to have this life set apart from sin the lie that sin told us you know and I personally believe that that lie that that we so often believe is the lie of you know we're not deserving of God's love and then in through that we we come to a place where we devalue ourselves but I disagree with it. I think, I think it's a terrible lie, and here's why. All right, for instance, this, my friends, is a $20 bill. Take a good look. It's nice, isn't it? Crisp. No, it's kind of old. It's actually really old. It's from 2013. Now, I don't know if that's really old or not, but... <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, it's all right. It's right. <laughs> so it's from 2013. So this bill has been in circulation for six years. I can do math. I answered whenever you, yeah, anyways. Um, this bill has probably been used to buy drugs, to snort drugs, maybe, I don't know, um, to buy groceries, to pay bills. Maybe it's been in a strip club, you know, like, um, <laughs> it, it could have been in a strip club, but just imagine, what if this dollar here what if this was used to pay someone to murder someone else? Like, that's, that's the impact, you know? That's, that's this dollar, okay? But with that being, who wants this dollar? Who wants this $20 bill? Come on, who wants this $20 bill? No one raised, I'm giving a $20 bill away. Why aren't you raising your hands? No? Come on, come on. Okay, all right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Are you sure you want this $20 bill? After what I just told you? This is a gross $20 bill. You don't know where this thing's been or what's on it. It's okay. Well, why, why do you want it? Why, why would you like it? Because I can still buy something out of it. Mm, see, that's good. See, this $20 bill. Still, Yeah, of course. Come on. That $20 bill, regardless of what it's been through, has not lost its value. 
the value is still in that bill. And so often, that's how God thinks of us. Look, go ahead and look in Romans 5, 8, and it says, but God shows his love for us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. See, it doesn't matter where we've been or where we're going or, or what we've done. God still sees value in us, but he's waiting for us to recognize it ourselves. And I truly believe that as we, we start to address this, we start to really figure it out, that we can come from a place of being so confused in our walk with God because we, we devalue ourselves constantly. We say words like, oh, I suck, or oh, I'm not good enough. And that, that's a constant lie from the enemy that we're receiving. But I, I've got some steps for you that I think are really good that will take us from that place to a place of peace and confidence in our walk with God. So how do we recognize it? My first point is know your creator. Genesis 1.27 says that God created human beings. He created them God-like, reflecting God's nature. See, you were built from the same DNA as heaven. You have a holy bloodline, a holy bloodline that cannot be defeated. And my point number two, know your identity. This, is a, this, this one sounds easy, but I promise you it's a lot harder than it is. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says anyone who believes in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Now to find your identity, you just need to surrender to Jesus and he'll do the rest. Now, that sounds easy. Here's, here's the third part. Trust the process. Philippians 1.6 says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the end of the day of Jesus Christ. God always has a process and a timetable. And this is where the second, the second point can, can be a little hard sometimes is because we can expect God to, you know, expedite the process. You know, we're, we're wanting to be over here with glory. We're like, yeah, Lord, you know, a rhema word, we're receiving revelation. It's just incredible. But God's like, okay, well, let's move slow-mo all the way there. You know, let's get there. And you're just like, no, God, I want it now. I want it now. I want to feel that now. But what's going to make this so much easier for you in that process is if you learn how to value yourself. The same way God values you that though, you know, you've gone through so much stuff, you're still worth so much just like that $20 bill. And once you, can, once you can achieve that, this walk will be so much easier for you, and I promise you will lead an indestructible life. So now I'd like to welcome to the stage Alexis Ruiz. Oh, sorry. Elliot, sorry, my bad. Elliot Mendoza, my best friend. My name is Alexis, y'all. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about Samson. Um, I know we've heard this story. How many of you guys have heard the story about Samson? Samson, it's an amazing story. I was reading it. And just to tell you a little bit, if you haven't heard that story about Samson, Samson was someone who was probably the strongest man on earth. He was, he was I mean, I can just picture him like uh, back in the day, Arnold, the, the, the bodybuilder. I can't pronounce his last name. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I'll, I'll stay away from that. So I call him Arnold. So, um, so yeah, so Samson was known to be strong. Um, he was he was he killed thousands of he killed a thousand men with a donkey's jawbone so he was he killed he tied up 300 foxes lit them on fire and burned like a bunch of fields so he was pretty strong but my what i want to focus on today he fell in love and he met someone named delilah and delilah i mean her assignment for samson was to figure out a way to take his strength away that was her assignment see his strength was found in his hair and Samson, um, nobody knew that. So people were trying to figure out how, how can we make this guy weak? How can we take his strength away? So then he fell in love with Delilah. And like I said, time after time, Delilah, what she did, she tried to, she tried to get it out of Samson. She was like, um, if, if, how can I take your power? How can I, how can I, how can I, where does your strength come from? And Samson was like, if they tie me up with seven bowstrings, so she tied him up with seven bowstrings. And out of nowhere, she yells, the, 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 she says, the Philistines are coming. And he just snaps that like nothing. And then she says, wow, you're making me look like a fool. Where's your strength really from? And she did that three different times. If I was my second time, I would have, like, peaced out. I would have been gone. I would have ran out like, no, I don't trust you. You're setting me up. But here, here, here's the thing. After the third time of her nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging, he finally like was like, oh, I'm tired of it. 
I'm tired of it. Here's my secret. It's in my hair. If you chop my seven locks, you're going to know that I'll be as weak just as anybody else. And I was, I was reflecting on this because this is, isn't, isn't that the way life is? Isn't that the way life is that you, you go through life and you're trying to live this righteous life, but then you get temptation after temptation. You get, you get distraction after destruction, distraction that one day you're like, you know what? It's okay. Like, I don't care. I'm just going to, I'm going to give up. And so she, he finally told her where his strength was from. And if you can just put verse, verse 20 of Judges 16, 20 says, then she shouted, Samson, the Philistines are coming. He woke up and thought, I'll get loose and free as always. But he was wrong. And what I, what I, what I got from that is he put his trust in his strength. And instead of putting his trust where the, who brought the source of that strength. And, and one thing that I also saw is that the, the enemy won't stop until he discovers your compromise and what you will disobey. And when, you, and he, when he discovers that, what's going to happen, he'll go for the kill. And that's what happened with Samson. And, and just to kind of tell you what happened on verse 21, the next verse, the Philistines captured him and put his eyes out. They took him to Gaza, chained him and, uh, with bronze chains, and put him to work grinding the mill in the prison. So not only did the enemy take his strength, but they took his vision. And I was, when, that, when I was reading that, that, that spoke to me. I was like, man, I, I could relate to this. Sometimes I feel like, I was, like my strength was taken away from me. But then also, when my strength was taken away, I couldn't see where I was going. And, and that really, that really, um, God started speaking to me and it started, it, I brought this message because I know there's people in this place that maybe perhaps, um, you've been, you, you, you don't know where you're going. You lost your vision. Maybe social media, you're so busy looking at other people's vision that you lost a hold of yours. Or maybe, maybe perhaps you, you feel, okay, I'm too young to dive in all into what God has for me because no one's going to listen to me. Maybe I'm too old. Maybe that's your Delilah. You know, Delilah doesn't have to be a person. doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be something else. And, and um, the thing that I love about this, this story is, is the next verse. is But his hair started growing back. And I just want to, I, I, want to, I wanted to share this with you because if you can picture Samson, he was blind, right? Like they took his, give me one second, yo. All right. So he can't see, right? He was blind. He couldn't see. They took his eyes out. They took his vision. And, but his hair started growing back. And one thing that I wanted to tell you here today is that just because you can't see where you're going doesn't mean that you can hear the voice of God to where he wants to take you. Just because you feel you can't see where you're going doesn't mean that you can prophesy to where you want God to take you. And that's as God started speaking to me. is like sometimes we feel that we can't see where we're going. We can't see where we're going, so we quit and we stop. But you have to remember that there's hope and God is a God of redemption. You see, a year ago, I came in through those doors, sat at this back row, and I had no direction. I had no idea where I was going, but I knew I needed God. And in that process, it's, been, it's now been a year, February 25th, the day I will never forget that I walked in through those doors. And I sat at the second row, and God just met me here without vision. But I, I, I told God, okay, I need to hear from you. And I heard from him, and, I, and, and this is the place where I literally encountered God. And my family can tell you, my mom can tell you, this is a place where in a year I told God, God, expedite this process that I can't, I don't have no idea where it's going. I mean, be careful what you pray for because a year later, like, it'll happen. God's not going to be like, hey, this is what you prayed for, you know. So, and, so I just want to encourage you today that just like Samson, your hair is growing back. Just because you, you feel like you lost hope. You, you, you can't see where you're going. Doesn't mean that you can't hear God. Doesn't mean that you can declare, you can prophesy to where you want God to take you. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Oh, and we got Alexis Ruiz in the house. Can I have your number, sir? 
just kidding. I told myself I wouldn't joke, but I, I had to. Let me bring it back. Thank you, Jesus, for expedited processes. You know what I mean? All right, I'm done. I'm done. Sorry, guys. All right, so you know what? We're talking about life lessons, and one thing that we all learn when we give our lives to God you know, and we start our walk with him is this. We figure out what does Jesus have to say about us? Am I right or am I right? I'm right. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a little interactive portion, okay? So I'm going to say, Jesus said, I'm going to insert a promise of God, and you're going to say amen with the greatest attitude you all have. Can you do that? Let's try it. Say amen. amen. You can even do this if you want to. Okay, ready? Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. You better amen that. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Jesus said, take courage, for I have overcome the world. Amen. Last one. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. You all pass and you all get a high five after this service. You know, but we always talk about what Jesus said, but we never talk about what Jesus said didn't say. Does that make sense? We always talk about what he said, but there's things that he hasn't said, and that's this. Jesus never said forgiveness would be easy. Jesus never said that you wouldn't feel anxious. Jesus never said that you wouldn't have fear or doubt. Jesus never said that your heart wouldn't be broken, but Jesus did say that he would be the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, he fulfills your story from start to the finish of it. <clears throat> And, you know, in the last year, I feel like every time I'm like, oh, last year was so hard. It's like every year comes with its trials. But in the last year, I've learned what Jesus never said, but he prepared me for it. And so uh, I have had the blessing of growing up in church and, you know, cultivating this relationship with God. My twin is sitting up in the front row, my dad. Like, I'd, honestly, if I didn't have my mom or my dad, I don't know where I would be in life. If I didn't have the church, I don't know where I would be in life. That's why parents, side note, bring your kids to church. If they're in your house, bring them because this is what keeps us sane as kids and as, as now young adults and as youth, no matter what. So bring your kids. Um, so I felt like everything last year was just coming to like a crazy, just craziness. Like everything that I've dealt with in the past was just in heightened even more. Um, my health, my job which you would think, Brad, I just worship all the day 24-7 here. But no, I got a job to do. Um, you know, um, my relationships, my family, you name it. I was complaining to the Lord, and dear Lord, he is so patient with me. But fear had even creeped into every single part of my life. Like, I would literally come to church. I would do my job. I would lead my team. I would go back home. But I felt nothing on the inside anymore. I literally felt numb. I, c I couldn't feel anything, no matter how amazing things were going in my life around me. Um, and I was also afraid to just face a lot of the pain that I had, that I even for a moment just stopped playing my piano on the side at home in my own time because I couldn't feel, I didn't want to feel anything. I would rather just feel numb than to feel something. Um, but Jesus never told me that I wasn't going to go through this. But he did tell me that I would come out of it. And I'm here to encourage you today that it's the faith that you have in God that would help you to come out of wherever situation you're in. And he's faithful, just like we sang it today. Faithful you are, faithful forever you will be. Um, so you would think I'd get it on the second month, but no, I struggled all the way up until December, whatever the last day was, um, until I came to the place where I was like, God, I'm done. Like, I'm done doing things on my own. I can't fix me. My parents can't fix me. Elliot can't fix me. Uh, just no one, sorry, I know, I was probably making me nervous. No one, no one can fix me. You, you come to this place where you're like, nothing can fulfill me, nothing can fix me, nothing can encourage me. But I said, Jesus, but you did say that I can overcome this. And I remembered that in the midst of Jesus never said this, but you know what? Jesus did say that I am an overcomer. Jesus did say, don't be afraid, only believe. Jesus did say, you can go through this. And it's not weak for you to get help. You know, so many times we think, you know what, the, um, if, if we just show who we are, if we share our struggles, then we're weak. That is such a lie. 
it is, God says, when you're weak, I am made strong. And so it's not weak for you to get help. It's not weak for you to go to the Lord and bring all your stuff. He created you. He can handle you. Um, and it's in all that mess that he is made stronger. And you know that he is God overall. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is, oh, now faith. I love that because faith is now. It's not tomorrow. It's now in this moment. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. It's such a beautiful word, but it's such a, there's a depth to faith. And as we define faith, faith is not defined by, oh, easy to hard, like, yeah, faith is easy this day or faith is hard this day. Like, I don't like him when, <laughs> watch my words. I don't like him when we say, God, give me faith. He already gave you faith. But it's what are you going to do with the faith that he's given you? Are you going to stir it up? Because it's inside of you already. Um, but faith is a choice. It's faith that will give you the tangible hope to see what you're believing for. Substance is a tangible thing. You can feel it. You can touch it. So faith is that hope that you're going to see that God is going to be faithful in your life. And so I made a choice for myself. Like I said, it took me a full year. But we're all in a process. And we have all experienced different things. But we all have the same choice. And I want you to think about where you are in life right now. In the process that you're in, how can you have faith to see? And I believe with every fiber of my being that God has this preferred picture, this preferred future for you, this plan for your life. And it's not what you think it is. It's not even worldly expectation, but it's a life filled with faith. And what do I mean by a preferred picture, right? We were talking about how forgiveness isn't easy, all these things. We think preferred picture, preferred future is like everything's great. My fantasies are awesome. My marriage is awesome, which is everything God wants to give you. But I feel like his preferred picture is that God wants you to be free, and he's asking you to forgive those who have hurt you so that you can be released. There's true freedom in that. I believe his preferred picture for you is to trust in him, that he has it all in control, to dream bigger than you've ever dreamed before. It's the promises that he's spoken over to you maybe 10 years ago, maybe 15, maybe yesterday he spoke to you. It's that preferred picture that he has for each and every one of you. It's his preferred picture for you to choose him every day despite what you feel, despite what you see, and living an honest life before the Lord. And here's the good news. Do this with me. Breathe in and breathe out. As long as you have breath in those lungs, you can change the course of your life right now. It's not over yet. You have breath in your lungs that God has placed in each and every one of you. And until that stops, you can change now. It's not too late. And the amazing part about God is that you can start any time. And that's why it's, a, it's called now faith. Now is the time. Um, and how do you begin? Number one, I said was relinquish your power. That's what actually God told me in 2017 that I didn't do any of it um, <laughs> until now. <laughs> he said relinquish your power. Relinquish means to voluntarily cease to keep, claim, or give up. Relinquish your own understanding. Relinquish your own thoughts. Relinquish your own actions. And the second thing is faith is now. Trust him. Do it one day at a time. My dad challenges me weekly. Bless the Lord on my soul. And if it wasn't for him, there's this one Sunday, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to challenge, take the challenge. I'm going to have faith. I literally had nightmares all night. The next day, things were going well in worship. And I was like, ah. But I chose faith, and I responded differently. And so I challenge you, respond differently than you, what you would usually do. Do something crazy. Do Be awesome. If something's not working, be like, thank you, God, for everything you're doing. Um, and my last scripture is John 16, 33. It says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And I'm here to tell you that God has already overcome your past. He's already overcome your present. He's already overcome your future. And it's in Jesus you get healed. It's in Jesus you find peace. It's not in Alexis. It's not in Pastor Mauricio. It's not in Pastor Virginia. It's not in your leader. It's in Jesus that you find everything you need. And you are an overcomer. And now is the time for you to just choose faith. So today I challenge you. Tomorrow when you wake up. Be radical and start responding to situations differently than what you would usually do because God already overcame it for you. Thank you. Great job, baby. Yes, Alexis and Elliot have been dating now. Gosh. But you know what? Uh, I, Along with my wife, I, I think we trained our daughter well in the fact that she waited uh, 
24 years and has, it's her first boyfriend. But what's cool is that Elliot asked for permission. And he's like, well, listen, no, 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 listen. He first asked for permission. Can I, can I hang out with your daughter, you know? <laughs> And can I get to know her? Can I just, you know, I really had like her. Then after that, then he asked for permission. Can I ask your daughter to be my girlfriend? You know what I'm saying? And so I love that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for respecting. <laughs> I've heard it said, new level. <laughs> Say with me, new level. New, level. new devil, right? I've heard that comment for the last 22 years of walking with Christ, but I've changed it. For me, I see it this way. Because you know what? I think when you start saying, new devil, new devil, well, then you're giving the devil more props than he really needs. You know what I'm saying? I say it this way, new level, do something. Right? Everybody wants a new level, but no one wants to do anything. You got to do something. You got to be in your process in order to see that next level. I hope that no one here has a goal of surviving the rest of their life. I hope that your goal is to thrive, to thrive in this life, to thrive. And though things may not be going the way Alexis said, they may not be going incredible. They may not be amazing circumstances you're facing right now. I mean, whatever it is that you're going through, you have to learn how to faith your way through this life. You have to learn how to trust God. You have to learn how to develop your faith a little bit more. Every single year, every single month, every single day, you have to up your faith level. That's why this church is called Elevate. you got to elevate your life constantly if you want to see the next level. Let me ask you this quick question. What does your next level look like? I want you to think about that question. What does your next level look like right now? What does that look like to you right now? What does that next level look like? Let me give you an example. There's a story of these two guys. Anybody like fishing? I love to fish. Two guys are out on a boat, and they're fishing. And, uh, you know, one guy sees the guy fishing his friend, and he's catching, like, like every big fish you can think of. And, uh, but he sees him throw the fish back in the water. And they know they're out fishing so that they can bring fish back home. And he's catching all the small fish as well. And he's keeping the small fish, and he keeps throwing back the big fish. So the guy's like, what the heck? What's he doing? And so this goes on for a while, and he finds just say, okay, this is stupid. This is crazy. He's like, uh, why are you throwing the big fish back in and keeping the small fish? And the guy said, oh, it's because my frying pan is about this small. <laughs> and it, so, so how, how many know that, you know, it, it's not small fish that he needs. He needs a bigger frying pan. I think there's people sitting here today that you need a bigger frying pan. You keep throwing away. You keep, you keep casting off the bigness that God wants to do in your life, but you keep just surviving with the little bit that you can barely get. When God doesn't want you to survive, God wants you to keep thriving with him. God wants you to keep growing with him. God wants you to keep taking your life to the next level. So here's a quick point for you. Let me give this to you. You have to do what you have never done in order to have what, in order to have what you've always wanted. I'm going to say that again. You have to do what you have never done in order to have what you've always wanted. And that is not easy for everyone to do. It's not easy for me to do. And even though I'm one of those type of people that is always willing to, to take a risk, but uh, it comes with challenges. It comes, it comes with fear sometimes as well. Alexis said it. We always talk about what Jesus said, but how about the things that Jesus didn't say, right? Jesus didn't say that anything that we do for him is going to be easy. Jesus never said that you're not going to be challenged. Jesus never said that you wouldn't have trials. As a matter of fact, the moment you decide to come to a place like Elliot say, when, when, when God starts giving you vision, oh, get ready. Because when he starts showing you some stuff, it gets freaky scary. But how many know that when God has a plan, when God has a divine destination for you, God will get you there. God wants to bless you, but we got to up the way we think. And so whatever you give yourself to always gives back, okay? Remember that. Whatever I give myself to will always give back. What does that look? What does that mean? What, is that, 
What am I saying? Well, I asked you that one simple question. What does your next level look like? Maybe your next level is you need to start reading. Maybe you don't, you don't develop yourself in your faith. You're asking, you're maybe saying things like, well, I don't have like her kind of faith or I don't have his kind of faith. Well, let me tell you something. There was a process to get that kind of faith. Maybe you want to, you know, up your game in the workplace and you're upset because everyone else keeps getting, you know, what, uh, upgraded and they're getting promoted, but you're not getting promoted. Well, have you asked yourself the question, well, what have you done to prepare yourself for that next level? Did you go back to school? Come on, are you, are you, you know, going to uh, workshops? Are you, are you sitting with the right people? Are you with the right they? Maybe your next level is not only, you know, reading, but it's, it's also uh, taking yourself a little bit more serious and say, you know what? I'm not getting any younger, okay? That's where I, I'm in that season. I'm not that old. But I keep telling myself this, Mauricio, you're not getting younger. Mauricio, you're not getting younger. Maudice, and what does that do? You know what it does? It puts a fire in me. It puts in fire in me not to waste my life. It puts a fire in me not to waste the time that God has given me. And every single one of you, you have a timeline of life. And here's the truth. And you don't know when that expires. No one here knows when that lifeline expires. But here's the truth. I'm not here to focus on how much life I have left. I'm here to focus on what I'm going to do with this time. i got to start taking some steps of faith, start stepping into realms that I've never seen before or experienced or, 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 or may look so huge and, and impossible. And I need to start exercising this faith and believe that God can do more than what I'm doing right now at this moment and this season at this age of my life. Look at what uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3 says. It says, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your what? Hearts on things what? Above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. But he also says, so it's not just about, see, your heart, your heart represents your belief. Your mind, he says, and then he says in verse 2, and set your minds on things above. Your mind represents your decisions. And so your heart will determine what you're willing to believe or not, but your mind is going to be the deciding factor of what you're willing to do or willing not to do. If you want to go to the next level, you have to raise the bar. you got to raise your mind just a little bit higher. And how many know that every single one of us here need to do that right now at this moment? you got to step up your thinking. Everyone here. Nobody gets away with it. So he says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ uh, Jesus. I love this because we need to give our hearts and our mind to the mysteries of God. And the only way you can do that is by setting this mind and setting this heart on things above. Here's the earthly things. The earthly things are the things that get you scared to do it. You got to stop looking at, at the impossibilities and start looking at the possibilities with God. I mean, just the story I shared with you about the pilot. Man, in the natural, on this earth, I could never see it happening, but I have to just keep saying it. I love what Elliot said. You know what? Just because you may not have a vision to be able to see it in the natural, but I can hear the voice of God. I can hear God tell me, Mauricio, you will go into the villages. Mauricio, you will go into the highways and the byways. And I can hear it, but I couldn't see how that was going to happen. First of all, I'm in a foreign country. Second of all, uh, I would love to get a pilot license. That's like one of my bucket list things to do. But um, that takes more time. I'm pretty busy right now. But how many know that when you have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, then you have the capacity to set your mind just a little bit more above than you did today. I'm challenging you. What's your next level look like? What does it look like? What does that look like? If you don't know what that next level looks like, there is no next level. There's no next level until you decide, what am I going to do next? Some of us are too tired in here. You're just exhausted. Why? Because you keep letting your age be the deciding factor of your what's next. That's why people die early. When you lose vision, you lose life. 
When you lose vision, you lose hope. What's your next level look like right now? Close your eyes for a second. Please think, 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 think with me tonight. What is the next level for you? See it right now in your head. What is it? What, what is that next level? Is it, is it being a little bit more serious with your walk with God? Maybe that's the next level. Maybe, maybe it's been more of a religious thing than a relational thing with God. Maybe the next level is, you, you're, man, you're great with your love for God and your relationship with God, but, but you know with all honesty that, that you, only, you only get comfortable with what you currently have and you can't see yourself having more. And so the next level is, you know what? I'm either going to go back to school or I'm going to start a reading plan. I'm going to start reading one book a month on, on, on the subject that I want to pursue. Uh, what, what is the next level? I need to maybe get in a network of, of business people if you want to start a bit. What's the next level? Because until you're ready to, to take your heart and your mind to that next level above and stop living on the earth meaning stop living in that natural mindset and start activating your faith again amen you can look at me again some of you were falling asleep that's okay i, I love you amen and here's what happens and i want to say this because you know what most people don't have the capacity and this is sad it's most people most people don't have the capacity to think above their circumstances, their opinions. Most people don't have the capacity to think above their current challenge. And so what do they do? They give up. They quit. And they allow the status quo to be the rest of their story. Don't be that person. Because like Alexa said, it's all in Christ, guys. It's in, in Jesus I'm going to do that. In, G, in Christ, I'm going to see God's vision coming. In Christ, I'm going to begin to see God's promises come to pass. Too many of us are trusting in our own strength. We're trusting in our own gift, our talent, and that will only get you so far. Please hear me tonight. That will only take you so far. We have to give back to the place of faith and say, what does my faith life look like? in order for me to get to the next level. What am I going to do? Here's the last verse, and let's get out of here. Joshua 1, 8 says this. He, he says, never stop reading this scroll of the law. What scroll is he talking about? The Bible. Never stop reading the Bible. Listen, maybe your next level is open your Bible again. It could be that simple. That, that wasn't deep, was it? But for some of us, we have closed our burning bush, and yet you want a revelation. You want a burning bush experience? Open your Bible. Stop, stop trying to quote the same old scriptures that you've been quoting forever and get a fresh revelation. Get a fresh scripture from heaven. Open your Bible. Start reading it and watch God just begin to read your life and convict you and move in you and watch what he does. Look what he says. Never stop reading this scroll of the law. Day and night you must what? Oh, do you honestly, maybe the next level is, man, I'm going to think for a change. I mean, that would be a next level, huh? I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just trying to be honest. Just trying to be authentic. Just trying to keep it real. Right? Just trying to be honest with ourselves. How many honestly think about God's word on a daily basis? Okay, one person. God bless Sharon. I'm going to hang out with Sharon. Go to her Bible study. <laughs> No, seriously. Hey, maybe your next level. I'm going to start going to the Bible study once a week. I'm going to go sit under Sharon and just hear her. Maybe your next level is serving here at Elevate Church. Maybe your next level is to start trusting God with your finances and start tithing. Maybe your next level is to forgive someone right now. Maybe your next level is to just accept that you are special, that you are unique. Maybe your next level is to just say, you know, God, I don't feel loved, but I'm just going to believe that you do love me. And he says, and, and he says, and as you meditate on this day and night, he says, make sure you do everything that is written in it. Then things will go well with you and, and you will have 
great success. Come on, how many want great success in their life? How many are ready to go to the next level in their life? Stand to your feet. Let's go home. How many are ready for the next level? Amen. Okay, me too. Amen. I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Before I pray, can we thank our, our wonderful speakers that spoke today? What a great job, huh? I'm so proud of you guys. You guys are awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys all did a phenomenal job. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.